working with files and folders in Power Automate Desktop is straightforward. I have created a folder with six files in it, and the mission now is to sort each file type and then create a new folder and cut them into there. So that means that each text file will go into a directory called txt and so forth. I also build in a trap that you'll see a lot in the real world. That is the extension here is in capital letters and this one is non capital letters. But of course, each text file must go into the same folder. My name is Anas Jensen. Let's learn some Microsoft Power Automate desktop. If you want these sample files, you can go to the link in the description below, mark them and then click download. I downloaded mine to my desktop. You will see them here. That's uh, the directory. I want to grab the path of this folder. So what I do here is that I press shift and then right click with my mouse that will open up this extended menu. Go find the copy as path and we'll go to Power Automate Desktop and create the solution. First, we will set a variable for the folder path. So choose a set variable and drag it in. We will name our variable file path then in the value control V to paste it in. So I'll delete the quotation marks and then I'll click save. Now we can use this variable name whenever we want to call the path. This has the benefit that if these files get moved, we can just change it here in the set variable. Now I want to get the files that is in this folder. So I'll find a get files in folder and drag it in. So here the folder, that is the folder path that we just created up here called file path. So I'll click this little X here and choose the file path. We will not choose to include subfolders, but we can do so if we want it. The variables produced that is called a files and that will be a list of files. So then I can click save. Let's try to run the automation to see that it works that we can add the files to a list. If you go over here on the right and click this little X, if you don't see the variables in files, double click it. Now we have a list of files. Each item has its, uh, its place on the list. We have three items and the first one is index zero, then one and two. That is because this is zero indexed. If I click the first one, I can click more here. You can see, and let me just expand it. We have some properties of this file. For example, we have the extension and that is called dot extension. And here you can see the extension of this last, this first one here that is called dot XLSX. And um, this is the Excel file. And if I just go back here, you can see all six ones here. I can again, I can just do this to show all the elements. Now we will work with that extension to determine what type of file it is and then we will do the sorting. So I'll click close here. The first one we'll do is to iterate to each file. So I'll find a for each. A for each loop iterates a collection from start to finish and the value to iterate. That will be my list of files. You'll find it up here. So I click this X and double click the files. I will then store the current item uh, into a variable called current item. But since we uh, each item is a file, Let's just rename it to file. It doesn't mean anything, but this is just a reference variable that says when we work with the first one, we can call file that will get us the first one. The second one we can uh, reference to file again and grab that one. So just for referencing, it makes your flows a lot easier if you rename your variables to names that is describing for what they're doing. So for now, let's just try to write out the extension. So find a display message. And we drag that one in. So in the for each, down in message to display, click this little X here, click the arrow to the left of the file, and we will find the extension, which is here, and double click it. Now our expression is file.extension inside percentage sign. Let's see that it works. So I'll run it. Here you'll see dot xlsx, dot xlsx in capital letters, and so forth. Let us just stop it. Now we know that it works. We need to do a little bit of text manipulation. First, we will remove the dot and the dot is always in its first place. So we will just remove the first character for, for, from this value. 
So what I'll do here is that I'll find a get subtext here and drag it in in the start of the for each. The original text, well, that is the file.extension. So here, again, I'll just do the file. I always prefer to find them here in the menus. I could write them, I could just write this, but we will reduce the risk of errors when we just choose them um, automatically. I want to start at a position. And in programming, it's zero index. So the first uh, position, that is position zero, then the second position is position one. That means that we will start at position one and the length that will just be to the end of text and the variables produced, that is a subtext. But here I'll say extension value. This is just the name of the variable and I'll click save. Now we can write this extension value out in our display message. So simply just delete it, click this little X here and double click the extension value. Then I can click save. So now we have removed the dot and we can see it when we run it here. We have removed the dot. And that's the first part of our mission. Let's stop it. Because we also want to make uh, every uh, extension to lower so we can compare them better because uh, there's no difference for us whether or not it's capital or not, but else there will be. And we will click this little X here and then say change text case and drag it in right after this get subtext. The text to convert. Well, that will be the extension value. So I'll find it up here. I will convert them to lowercase. So pick that one here. And the variables produced, let's just save the value to the extension value again. Click this X, choose the extension value, and click Save. So now we have removed the dot and we have converted to lowercase. XLSX, XLSX, DOCX, and so forth. There's no difference in the capital or non capital now we can start comparing them and moving to new folders. We will first count them because we also need to create a nice log. And let me introduce you to a custom object. A custom object can be seen as a dictionary where you add key value pairs in. So I'll find a set variable. We will initialize it in the beginning. I'll drag in the set variable up here and then we'll give it a proper name. I'll say file count like this, and then we'll give it a value. So the syntax is we want percentage signs in start and in the end. Then we want curly bracket in the start and the end, and then we can add the key value pairs. For example, we can say uh, test A in single quotation marks, then a colon, and we can say this one has a value of result A like this. And uh, so this is a key value pair. The name is test A and the value is result A. Then it's comma separated, so it looks like this. We can add a space, that doesn't matter. It will be treated the same. Now let me just add one more item. So I'll say test B in colon that equals to result B. This is just to show you how this nice custom object works. That will be useful to you. Let me have a display message. It's just to write out something. So if I want to say, I want to look up test A or test B, I can go into the X here. So I go into the file count, that is this custom object up here. And then after the T, hard brackets, then single quotation marks. And inside that, I can say test B. So I look up a name and then I'll get a value back and click save. Now let me try to run it. Here you can see we look up the test B and then we get the value result B back. That's how it works. We will use it for the file counting. That means that we will have each extension in this list. That means that XLSX will be one item and then we will have the count of the files. The DOCX will be another item and then we'll have the count. We will only add it once. That means that we should check if this extension exists in this file count, it will not for the first item. So then we will just add it to it and we'll give it the value one because now we know we have one file type. If it exists, we will just add one to it. It looks like this. So, and I really want you to do this because this is so nice to be able to do. It will help you in a lot of your workflows. I'll stop. 
Let's also delete this display message. So I'll delete it again. I go in here because this will be an empty list. We will of course not have test A, test B. That was just to show you. So I delete everything. And to make an empty one, we will have two curly brackets in the start. And in the end, like this, I'll click save. It looks like this. So now we want to say, does our file extension, that is our file type, does that exist in this file count? If yes, um, we will just add one to it. If no, we will create it. So when we ask questions, we'll use an if. Search for an if. Drag it down below the change text case. And then you will ask. And I'll go here. So we want to ask is if does the file count contains, I'll click this X, file count. And then we want to say, does that one contains? And we'll say, does it contains the extension value here? Yeah. And that means, does it contains XLSX, DOXX, and so forth? And we will click save. We will not use this ignore case. We could have used it and then got rid of where we changed the text case. But since we're also going to use this extension in the log, we have created the solution with this one here. So then I can click save. So now we have an if. And if this is true, we do something. We also want to add a branch to whenever this expression is not true anymore. That means that the item is not created up here. So I'll find an else and drag it in. Right now we have nothing in it. But if it doesn't exist, we want to create a value up here, the key up here and give it the value one. So let me find a set variable and drag it in inside the else. So right here, I will say, um, I want to set the file count. Go here. I want to say, give me the file count, but the key I'll put in inside of hard brackets. If I just wanted to do a test uh, B, test C, I'll have it in single quotation marks. But because our value is right here in the extension value, I'll use that in here. So delete this text C and I'll just say extension value. So uh, because we are inside these percentage sign, that means that any text here without single quotation marks will get treated as, a, treated as a variable. So we're going into the file count. We add uh, this key, the extension value. Now we just need to give it um, a value. And um, since it doesn't exist before we're creating this, we're down here in the else, we will just give it the value one. It's the first time we see this file type. Then I can click save. So I can run and expect, inspect. We don't really do nothing. And right now we could have deleted this display message because now I'm sitting here and clicking this one six times. It's okay. I'll just delete it afterwards. That's not uh, really a big issue. But now go over to your file count and click here. So now you can see we have one XLSX, one DOXX and one TXT. That is because we're only creating the item the first time we see it. We don't do nothing if it's exist. But now this part of the solution actually works. So I click closed. Let's delete the display message down here. And uh, we solve for the then branch. We'll just do the same as here. So we can either drag in another set variable or simply just copy this. I recommend copying it because we are lazy as automation developers. So I control C, go up to the else, control V. We need to modify this a bit. So if I go in here, I'll say it's still uh, the file count extension value, but now I want to add one because I know it's there. I'll ch check for that in the if, so I'll add one to it. And that means that I'll grab this expression, remember the percentage sign. So I copy this one here and put it in here. To add one to it, just move inside the percentage sign and say plus one. This will add one to it. Now I can click save. Try to run the automation again. Now we have created a solution that creates a nice log. We still need to create folders and uh, move the files. But if you go over here, that's it. And this solution is so great because it works with any file type. You can try other file types. This will work. So then I can click this X. So now we know uh, we, we need to create a folder if we haven't created one. That means that the first time we see the file type, we'll create a folder. And again, we're down here in the else. 
So click this little X here and then find a, a create folder. It is here. Put it in the else branch. It doesn't really matter uh, if you put it uh, on top or in the end of the else. So we create a new folder into and then it will be the file path. That is the directory of our files. The new folder name. That will just be the extension value. That could be xlsx, doxx, and so forth. So refer to the extension value like this. Then we can click save. So now we have created a folder. And we know the folder exists if we are up here, because then otherwise we would have created it previously. So now we can start to move the files. So we will go after the if down here, and then we will find a move file. Yeah, and drag that one in here. So the files to move and now that's just time to do a referencing, we are referring to the file up here. So click this X and this is the file. That is because that is where we iterate each one of our files. Where do I want to move it? Well, I want to move it into the file path. File path. That one is up here. So that is our main folder. But I also want to create the subfolder. Otherwise, it will just move it to the same folder. So I'll have a backward slash and then I will move it to the extension value. Like this. So now um, we have created a solution. If the file exists, well, it would only exist if these folders were already present. And then we would have to create a dynamic solution. Here I recommend using a date time. But this is not the scope of this exercise. If you want to know, you're more than welcome to ask uh, down here in the description. I can link you to my solution. Then we can click save. So now we are moving the files. Let's also create a log when we are done. Here, I'll just write out this file count. It's not the most fancy log, but again, uh, it's a log. And we can in later um, lessons, we can see how to create even more nice logs. So here it will just be a display message, but it could also be to a text document. Go down here and then just write out the file count like this. Then we click save. So now again, let me repeat what we actually have accomplished here because it's quite huge. We're iterating through each files. Then we'll uh, count them. We're also saying that we treat um, these ones here in non-capital and capital endings equal. And then we'll start creating a folder and moving them. Let's see how it goes. And I can open this so you can see the solution. And you can see the folders are getting created and the files are getting moved. And this is our lock. Again, we could uh, format it, but it is a lock. It is a working lock. Then I can click OK. Here, the word file is in here. The text file is here. The Excel file is here. I prepared the next lesson for you. So go click it up here and become a complete Power Automate desktop developer.